Okay, I have 802, and oh. this is Annette Weiss from ASD, and it's my extreme pleasure to introduce Jeanette Macasia Lucas to all of you. And for those of you that didn't hear, um, Jeanette had said, you know, if you just say question, and then she will know that there's a question out there and take it from there. Um, the other thing, I want to be very clear and apologize for a mistake that was made on the announcement. It was Henry. listed that the new book that we'll be talking about, Lewis Macasia, was called Paranormal, and that was my mistake. The title is Phenomena. So if everyone makes sure it's Annie Jacobson's book, and it's titled Phenomena. Sounds more like Louie. <laughs> yeah, it does. I hear you. Okay. Um, one of the things I usually like to start every interview with, and that way we have our interviewees starting out on the same thing, is my basic question to Jeanette is, What's your earliest recollection of being a dowser? Oh, well, I'm just going to I'm going to just do a brief background that everyone mm -hmm. knows that Louis Matasha is my father and um basically when I was a kid, um I think one of the first things that happened was that the Marines came to the house, the generals and the the um chief of staff from the Pentagon. I I lived about 15 minutes from the Pentagon in Falls Church when I was about six or seven. And they came out to the yard to learn how to douse and then videotape it. Um, well, I guess back then it was filming in, in a black and white and then eventually color. And when they were in the backyard, they couldn't figure out how to use the L rods because Lewis was showing them the L rods to pinpoint where water was underground and then practice digging holes and putting um, items in the earth like a booby trap or a bomb or something like that and he labeled it and the Marines were very confused so I was one of five kids and he had my I was watching from the window and he was having my brother come out <clears throat> I think my brother was my maybe fifth grade come out and show the L rod and you know from the standpoint of that was my brother's first transaction with with dowsing and then what happened was my my brother we always had to show up my brother because I'm, I'm part Italian and I thought, why does my brother have to do this? Because I was one of four girls, and I thought, I can show him better. So what had happened was my brother showed him where the water was, and then since women are very good at being nosy and uh, taking it to the next level, is that uh, I said, okay, well, that's the water. Let me show you where the creek bed is. And then what happened was I kept using the L rod showing the creek bed is this way, and I, I kept saying, it kept saying yes, 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 yes. And then I flagged it because my dad uses these little flags. And then I said, the creek, the major creek is down here. And then once the visual happened with the Marines, they started doing it and understanding. I do think at times the brain cannot accept things like the L-Rods without visualization. And um, I, I think it's an automatic for men because some men have high sensitivity to the L-Rods with their fingers. Um, I just want to say this for everybody that says, I don't know how dowsing works, but... I'm just going to tell you a couple of secrets. Your fingertips and your sciatic nerve area have the largest quantity of nerves. And what happened is, in my theory, is that a man was walking down the road, what, 800 B.C., A.D., whatever, and, and what he did was he had a walking stick, and he goes, God, I'm thirsty. I'm so thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. Similar situation to what I experienced when I was a kid. And so I was in the 60s. I was, what, uh, six, seven years old? And so same traditional technique, instead of an L rod with a coat hanger, which that's what my dad was into at the time, um, the man walking down the street uh, kept feeling his stick pulled to the ground. And when he felt the stick being pulled to the ground, he, he thought, well, what's there? And he started digging, and he found water, and there's his water, so that he started using the same technique over and over. And I, I think that we have developed it so much more into – finding anything else mysteries gold treasure whatever and so when i was a kid my brother used it for the little the water in the yard and i went to the extra extreme and went and found the creek bed and then the bigger creek so i just want to tell people uh, as robert robert knows too that 
you just don't have to go for the water itself. You can go for the creek bed. You can enlarge on the creek bed. There are lots of things you can do. And that was my first circumstance. But I just want to tell people from the historical standpoint, um, it's critical to know my first experience and then the man's experience, his first experience with finding water going, oh, my gosh, my rod is magnetically being pulled to the ground, and that's what happened to me as a kid. And I hope that helps everyone understand a little bit. Okay, thank you. And just a reminder for people who came on, please press star six to mute your background noise. Then when you do want to speak, press the star six again. We have a lot of people on the line. Yes, I, I just tuned in. I'm Robin from Michigan, and thank you. Okay. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi. And who is this? Um, I'm Sylvia from New York. Oh, great, Sylvia. Hi. Um, now, and then what else would you like to know? And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll take questions on how I find missing objects or, um, you know, getting written about about finding things. Um, because I did take it to the next level after Lewis. You know, you can learn the basic dowsing, which is the, what the conferences provide, uh -huh. and then you can go to your specific teacher for gardening and that kind of thing, depending on your passion. Okay. Uh, does anyone have a question for Jeanette? Jeanette, I have a question for you. Are you recording? Yes, I tried to. I'll okay. try it again. Yes, Jeanette, I have a question. So, mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with Louis Matasha. You're not. Okay. Okay, okay well, it's Valid basically... Valid question. Yeah, uh, it's basically um, in in America, um, I'll, I'll just tell you, there are a few dowsers that sort of founded or helped um, grow dowsing. Um, it was already birthed in the beginning in, in Vermont. And then uh -huh. my father took it, took it to the next level. Um, he was in the survey business, you know, like a surveyor for land plotting and that kind of thing. Yeah. And he, he found that instead of just finding water wells, let's use the same technique to find booby traps and bombs. So he sent film footage out to the military, and then he got really great responses from the CIA, the U.S. military, and um, different... Uh, agencies that said, well, if you can find bombs and that kind of thing, can you find tunnels? And so it expanded up, up, upon there. Um, Annie Jacobson just wrote a book recently. It's coming out around March 30th, and she's disclosing um, highly classified documentation that is starting to come out about who worked for the CIA, the feds, and the military to locate different things, whether it's a criminal booby traps and bombs and that kind of thing. And my father was the only dowser put in the book. And well, the reason being is well, that... he may be the only one who was put in the book, but Louis Matesha was one of those dowsers. Well, that's, that's, yeah, that's who we're talking about. There. We're talking about that's Louis. That's what we're talking about, Diane. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was somebody uh -huh. else talking. I'm yeah, no, sorry. Louis is my dad. Louis, you can call him Louis, Louis, that's fine. I mean, people call him Louise, whatever. <laughs> But, yeah, the good news is there. I hear there's another man out in California that said he did it similar time frame. That I don't know and I, I've never heard of um, because a lot of the material is classified and it's filmed and so forth. Um, I mean, he was just at the right place at the right time, and one of his buddies worked for the CIA. So while everybody else was out there taking their kids to Disney um, movie theaters and that kind of thing, my father brought home um, – classified movies and our Friday nights was watching what the federal government was doing like UFOs and paranormal activities with Russia and that kind of thing and um, I mean we you know we were very fortunate to see stuff but it was pretty scary I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie about that okay, okay. So does that and help then you Lewis went on to be a trustee of ASD for quite a while and right. I first got to know the name because this was the man who introduced um, Dowsing for children at conventions. Right. Well, yeah, Sarah that, that, Martin Camarilla. <clears throat> right. I'm sorry, what does it say? I, I just called to announce myself. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> who, who is joining us now? Sarah Martin Camarilla. Oh, hi. Great. Um, yeah, and Louis, uh, if everybody knows doesn't know Louis Matasha, my father, that's okay. There are books out there. You can Google his name. The last name is Matasha, M-A-T-A-C-I-A. Again, it's Lewis, L-O-U-I-S. 
sometimes it's Louis, but very rarely uh, on Google. Um, it's L O U I S, and the, the last name is Matasia, M A T A C I A. And um, there are lots of Matasias from Italy, um, but he's the one from uh, Northern Virginia who wrote a bunch of books on dowsing and the paranormal, treasure hunting, that kind of umbrella. Um, the rest were doctors or psychiatrists or even a cook in Italy, so there are a few of us out there. Okay, and Jeanette, if anybody forgets for all you. this or needs further information, feel free to call headquarters. Right, yeah. Tomorrow. Go ahead. I'm sorry, you had a question? Yes, how is your father? Not well, not well. Um, he um, Once he went into dementia land, he had a massive heart attack, and um, oh. once he went into that, he was saying some really scary stuff. He said he was a... I had the he, pleasure of having him and Carl uh -huh. Bracey for breakfast a few years back. Uh -huh. And what a southern gentleman he, he is. He, he is. He, yeah, he's down here in Richmond with me, but he, one minute he would be fine, and the next minute he tells the nurses he's an assassin. And, you you know, you would this is stuff that he never <laughs> says. He just doesn't talk like that since you, since you met him for breakfast or lunch. That's the real Lewis. Yeah. And and that's why I don't share him too much because he can say some pretty scary stuff right now and he can tell you some pretty scary stories of when he was in the Philippines, like people's heads chopped off. I mean he just says stuff that's just a little too far out there. It's not his fault. It's it's no, his not brain at all. on Yeah, and he his brain just shrunk again last week. And oh. um Yeah, Is so he, he taking any visitors? He um I my I talked to the the receptionist desk, and they he doesn't even remember my brother visiting him two weeks ago. Um, so if you visit or call, you have to call before noon or you have to visit before noon. But we're in Virginia, so so I always tell people, let me make sure with the doctor. I, in fact, I'm, I was just about to call them and find out his status and see how bad he is. Um, I'm not going to fib to you. Um, I went to see him in this last six months, and he's hit me very powerfully in the last four months. And it's it's again it's not his fault. He's oh not, yeah, he's, it's yeah. it's not really you know so fit. so now my twin has taken over and he's seeing her all the time and he hasn't hit her at all. So so you know you just don't know why the brain does what it does. But his dementia is off the charts. He also has terminal cancer. Oh goodness. Yeah. He's okay, a I'm going to bring us back to. Dowsing. More questions for Jeanette. Yes, okay. I'm sure. sorry. Okay. 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 And again, a reminder for people to please mute your background by hitting star six. You know what? If it would help, I'm going to tell you a couple things I do in dowsing that I took the dowsing to an extreme. On the internet, you can pull up my name. It's Ginny Lucas or Jeanette Lucas. It's the Italian spelling, G I N E T T E. Um, or it's Ginny with CNN and Nancy Grace when I found a missing person. I'm going to tell you a couple of things. I, 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 I call it cheating, but Robert knows it's not cheating. But I'll, I'll take a map out, and whenever I work on a missing person case, I, I roll the map out, and I find the, on the map where the missing person is. But let's say it's money. You have missing money. Like people have called me for 250000 or 300000 and I said, okay, so you have to pinpoint where the money was seen last or the, where the missing person was seen last, and I put a pin in it. And I prefer the pins, P-I-N, that have the little round heads, bobble heads, you know, type things. And I poke it in the map, and then I take, take another piece of paper, and I write down on the piece of paper um, who. Okay, so let's say if it's money, I'll say 250000 and I'll say, you have to literally write down dollar bills or coins or jewelry, and you have to write down the specifics. And if you have a picture or a piece of paper that is identical to what you're looking for, that helps a lot. And then I write down the what, and I say jewelry and, you know, some of the – so it's who, if it's a person, or, you know, who is linked to the money. So, for example, uh, uh, Roger Ramjet was the guy who stole you – know, who, who was at the house. You don't want to ever work on the part of who stole it, who took it, or anything like that. Always work on – and always work on the focus of where is the missing object or where is the missing mystery. And so you write down who and then what and where. And so you don't want to do the where yet because I'm going to get to that at this point in, in just a minute. Um, when. So, so where could also be where was the original point of origin. Point of origin is let's say it's at my house in Richmond, Virginia, and I put down my street name. And then um, when I put down the date and as much as a close to the time as I can find, and then how, and say, 
you know, the question mark, question mark means I don't know. Or if I know somebody robbed it, say suspect. I never say who did it because you really don't know if there's more than one, that kind of thing. And so what I do is I take, <clears throat> take, take that piece of paper. So I've got my map. I've got my piece of paper. And I've got my picture of the missing object or the person. And so you have three items. I do a lot of things in the number threes. And um, I also have to tell you something goofy I do. I take a picture, P-I-T-C-H-E-R, of water and put it on the table, and I drink water while I'm doing the dowsing because water is magnetic and your body is full of water. And for some reason, it increases your delta theta state, and it also increases your visions, and you become more intuitive. And then my magic word that I tell everybody, which will be in my book eventually, but is show me where the missing object is but you have to create what i call a protocol you have to set yourself up it's just like a doctor getting ready to operate on somebody you have to have all your paperwork ready or you're not going to be that accurate um let's say you're a secretary and you're typing up a legal brief you have to have everything there and ready to go so you've got your map you've got your paperwork who what where when how you've got your picture of water and you've got your picture p-i-c-t-u-r-e of what's missing and then I do what the things I call cheating and I take my fingertips because the large amount of nerve endings in it and I touch it and I touch the map and I touch the piece of paper of who what when where how and I touch the picture of the missing object so let's focus and I'll tell you my favorite case one of my favorite cases was not the Anthony case in Florida and it wasn't the Chandra Levy case which a lot of people don't know about but it was a case in Pennsylvania, and a woman went missing, and um, one of the community uh, people, uh, business owners, knew her. And the cops insisted she probably ran off. So you can't even go by that. You have to go in totally neutral. So I wrote down all the details I had of who, what, when, where, how, the last time she was seen, and her name, and I got a picture of her. And you don't want your maps on the computer. You want to print it out. And then I went, so I wrote down the last point of origin, and it was her house. And in case you guys want to look it up, this is a really cool story. Her name was Elaine Pearson, okay? And this is critical because it was a really weird case. So I wrote down Elaine, and I wrote down the right spelling of her name. So it was Elaine, E-L-A-I-N-E, -E, and then Pearson, P-I-E-R. I, I, I'm pretty sure it was S-E-N. And you can spell that wrong and everything and get the wrong person. So I tell people all the time, you could have Mr. Smith spelled S-M-E-E-T-H, S-M-I-T-H. Do you understand what I'm saying? That you could be going totally for the wrong person, the wrong age, and so forth. So you also have to write down what age the missing person is. And so I've got my map. I've got the pin in the map, and I'm touching it. And as I'm touching it, here are my secrets. All of a sudden, I hear in my head, and this is important for everybody to understand, is that